Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Uh, we're going to spend some time uh, talking about summer's most infectious bugs. Uh, we're going to be spending some time with the holistic pharmacist, uh, Sherry Torkus. And Sherry uh, is a registered pharmacist, and she's been on all kinds of TV shows and all kinds of things throughout the country. And we welcome Sherry to Late Night Health. Hi, Sherry. Hi there. All right. When we talk about bugs, we're not talking about the ones that like are spiders um, and creepy crawly things, because I, I don't like bugs at all. I avoid them. I try not to kill them. I'm afraid that their relatives will show up at the funeral. <laughs> well, we're talking about a different kind of bug today. We're not talking about the pesky mosquitoes and spiders and house flies. We're talking about the bugs that can actually affect your health this summer. So these are bugs that can crop up in your picnic basket and cause food poisoning, bugs that cause bladder infections, which spike during the summer months, and also some of the resistant bugs, the bugs that are getting stronger than the drugs, we call those the super bugs, the antibiotic resistant bacteria that can also spe- uh, peak during the summertime. And those would be uh, MRSA? Yeah, MRSA, Klebsiella is another one. And, uh, you know, this is something, you know, we're hearing a lot more about, um, sadly, as um, our overuse of antibiotics is, is leading to a situation where these bugs are becoming super resistant to the commonly used antibiotics. You're, um, so you're, that's another. you're in Canada, and I know that the overprescribed antibiotics is, is prevalent here in the U.S. Is it the same in Canada? Oh, yes. It's, um, we face the same issues um, with respect to um, antibiotic resistance and becoming a, a global problem. And there's been statements issued by the World Health Organization, the CDC, Health Canada, and other, other agencies to really encourage uh, doctors to use antibiotics judici- judiciously, so only when they're absolutely necessary. And, and now I can tell you, working as a pharmacist, sometimes I get patients that come to me with a prescription for an antibiotic, they have a cold, they they even know it's a cold, but they go to the doctor and they bug the doctor because they want an antibiotic. They bug the doctor. They feel better. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I was going to say that. And doctors say, well, they they feel pressured. They give the patient the antibiotic to get them out of the office, and that's because, you know, the patient wants it. But everybody really needs to think carefully. When you are sick, only take a medication if it's absolutely necessary because not only is there a greater risk of resistance, but the side effects with antibiotics, the disruption in your normal gut flora, um, the diarrhea, the, you know, changing in your urine and other things can be, you know, troublesome. And, and the, the, they, I know that um, there's good flora and there's bad flora, bad, good and bad bacteria. The the antibiotics can they tell the difference between the the guys in the um, uh, shining white horse and the and the black guy the, the 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 guys who are wearing black? No, they can't. And the antibiotics uh, or sorry the yeah the antibiotics when you take them they they don't discriminate. They kind of go through your system and they they kill as much as they can. And that is the problem, especially with the antibiotics we use today, which are called broad spectrum. So they have um, very wide effects on all different types of bacteria. They kill the bad and the good. Um, And then as a result of that, what ends up happening is um, your normal gut bacteria can be disrupted for as long as six months after taking just a single course of antibiotics. So really important to, um, again, question and only take them when you absolutely need them. And remember, antibiotics are not effective for viral illnesses. They're only effective against bacteria. And if you do take an antibiotic, take a probiotic to make sure you replace that good gut health. But better yet, look at ways that you can fortify your immune system, your defenses, so that you can cut your chance of getting sick. And there's been some very fascinating research done recently on a type of medicinal mushroom compound, and it's called AHCC. Um, AHCC is the short form for active hexo correlated compound, which sounds very pharmaceutical, but this is actually a natural compound discovered in Japan. Um, I think that that's the has, only place you, it, it, all AHCC comes from Japan, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, and you know, it's, it's fascinating because this um, particular ingredient, and it's an ingredient that's found in um, certain nutritional supplements, um, like Quality of Life is, is one company that makes it. Um, what's great about this is it actually works on activating uh, your, and boosting your immune system. It increases production of your defenses, your cytokines, your natural killer cells, your macrophages, your T cells. Those are different components of your immune system that are, you can think of them as your army, your internal army that work to fight off a foreign invader. So this is something you take regularly to fortify your responses so that if you're around sick people and, um, you know, things are contagious, it helps to, to ward off those infections. And it's fascinating because not only has it been shown to have activity against some of the common bacteria, but there are um, there's evidence to show it can work against some of the uh, the tr- more tricky to treat infections like MRSA, like Klebsiella, and even some preliminary evidence that it can help to uh, boost your protective immune response to um, West Nile virus. Which, and and you know, I understand also a, uh, it's a protection against the big C. Yes, that's right. And they've yes. done studies on that as, as yeah, well. And in fact, yeah, the, it, that cancer is, you know, very, um, you know, interesting area of research. And I started my mother on this supplement when I found out about it when I was doing some research, research because my mother's a cancer survivor, breast cancer, and she's been cancer-free now for 10 years, had, you know, treatment and thankfully um, was successful. But, you know, in the back of her mind and our minds, we're always worrying, could there be a re- recurrence? And she's also found that since she's been sick, She's more predisposed to getting colds and flu and having a weakened immune system. So um, I've put her on this, and she takes this part of her daily supplement regimen. Why is it so expensive? <laughs> it um, is. It's like fifty dollars, sixty dollars a month. Yeah, you know what? It's technology, research, all of those things get factored in because we're not talking about, say, vitamin C or vitamin D, right. which is you know, cheap and affordable. And you know, sometimes the certain ingredients, the sourcing, the raw materials like the, the different mushroom compounds that, um, you know, might be involved in, in sourcing it out, and as well as, again, the research. Um, but, you know, compare that to what it would cost for, say, a high-power antibiotic, and it's, you know, much more affordable. Uh, right. Um, Our guest... That's, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, that is something to consider for those that are worried about getting those summer superbugs. And I, 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 you know, I think our insurance companies should pick up nutraceuticals as well as pharmaceuticals, but I don't know if they do that in Canada or not. I know that in Japan, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of nutraceuticals are provided uh, before they go to in quotes Western medicine. Uh, our guest uh, Sherry Torkus, uh, she is. Uh, the uh, a holistic pharmacist. As you're talking and talking about your patients, um, do you work in a as a regular pharmacist still? I do. Yes, I practice part time as a pharmacist, and I work you know one or two days a week, and I see patients. And I my focus is not just on dispensing drugs. I really try to educate people on what they can do to actually reduce their need for drugs. So how to stay healthy and how to you know, protect your health, because that's something that I'm personally passionate about. Um, so it's been the way that I've practiced um, for a number of years. And I also do with speaking engagements, and I've written a number of health books and booklets. And uh, I have actually a blog you can check out on my website if you go to sherrytorkus.com. It's S-H-E-R-R-Y-T-O-R-K-O-S, sherrytorkus.com. I have a blog there as well that and we'll uh, have, you can check on. And we'll have uh, we'll have a uh, a link to Sherry's uh, website on our website latenighthealth.com as well. Uh, Sherry, let's take a, a look at at other other bugs. Let's talk about food poisoning. When when I was a kid, uh, I can remember my my mother saying, "Don't leave the deviled eggs out. The man, mm-hmm. may, mayonnaise is going to um, get uh, you know will will spoil quickly." Um, my understanding is that the mayo, because of the preservatives we put in it, will probably last longer than the eggs, which may go bad quickly, especially in warm weather. Yeah, it's it's not so much the mayonnaise; it is the the eggs um, that are more more problematic. And um, also, if you're packing a you know a cooler bag and you have um, lunch meat 
or you have, you know, even cheese and things like that, it can go sideways, you know, after being exposed to higher heat. Like even a day like, you know, today here where I live where it's almost 90 degrees, um, you know, you might be out for a couple of hours and that food um, could be brewing a bacterial concoction. And, you know, you eat something like that and it's going to really put a damper on your day. It's going to cause some gastrointestinal distress. There's different types of bacteria that cause food poisoning. It could be um, E. coli, Clostridium, Salmonella, Listeria. Um, but the, the safe thing to do when you are planning your, your hiking trips and your picnics and your outdoor activities are, first of all, to um, pack your food in um, a, a bag where you can put ice packs and things like that to keep it cold. And try to avoid... Um, things that are more likely to go bad, like the eggs and the cheese and the meat. Stick with um, snacks like corn chips and hummus and nuts and seeds. And watermelon's a great food to have this time of year because it keeps you hydrated. Uh, Vegetable sticks, things like that are going to do a lot better outside. And if you're going to be cooking outside as well, just make sure you have some hand wipes with you um, so that you can clean your hands and uh, make sure you're, you're preparing your food safely. And regarding hand wipes, you know, occasional use or use hand wipes or a, a hand sanitizer on a regular basis? Uh, I, you know, I don't believe in over sanitizing. I think it's, it's not good um, to be overly hygienic. You know, there is um, you know, some evidence with the hygiene theory and the fact that we overuse antibacterial products. You're better to use like an alcohol-based hand wipe versus um, something that has an antibiotic in it. Um, like triclosan and some of those other ingredients. So I would use something that just has alcohol. Also, essential oils like thyme. Thyme oil is a very effective um, disinfectant, and you can find that. If you go into a health food store, you can find some um, better hand wipe choices to to clean your hands. When soap and water is not available, that's always a a good option. And and soap and water, of course, is probably the best thing to do. When When I go to a convention or meeting a lot of people, I will sanitize my hands more uh you know, a lot i don't do it when i'm you know on a day to day to day basis uh what are some of the other uh things we should watch out for in terms of summertime um uh, bacterial growth i know that one of the things we talked about uh that you talk about is urinary tract or bladder infections yeah, that's right. Bladder infections do peak this time of year uh, because we're spending more time outdoors. We're maybe not hydrating ourselves enough, not drinking enough fluids. Anytime you become dehydrated, your urine can become more concentrated. And if, say, you're outside and you're hiking and or doing a lot of activity and you've got um, moist undergarments on or a wet bathing suit, that can increase the likelihood of their um, being a problem and, and getting a bladder infection. Now, we talk about bladder infections as more of a female issue. However, men can get them as well. They're more common in men, um, especially over age 50. But bladder infection is actually the second most common infection that women get. Right. And it's uncomfortable. You get the pain, the frequency, the urgency. And we're going to talk about how to treat that in just a couple of moments, uh, bladder infections, and talk about it for both men and women. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with uh, Sherry Torkis, and we are talking about summer's most infectious bugs. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Hey, visit us at LateNightHealth.com and visit us at Twitter at twi- at LateNightHealth.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. 